We've seen our first simple method, the brute force string matching method, which was okay, but sometimes had a uh, really poor behavior. And one reason for that is that it doesn't exploit regularities in the pattern. In this next subsection, we want to look at a first attempt to overcome this. And um, for all of those, for all those of you who have seen a formal language class, you actually have uh, all the knowledge that is needed for that except you might not realize it. And for all those who haven't seen uh, regular expression and, and grammars and all and automata, um, we'll, we'll briefly recap how these things work. Before we start with that though, I wanna see how familiar you are with these things. Um, No, I don't seem to have that question prepared. So uh, let me just start this as um, So I'll just put in the, the dummy options for you and uh, you can use the slide then. Okay, so ignore the, the text in the question on Slido. Uh, I somehow lost the, the question when I prepared the session, um, but just uh, use what's written on the slide. Okay, I'll probably have to switch back and forth a couple of times. Uh, remember, a means you haven't heard of this. You see the results next to it, but I want to show it uh, for the video as well. And B says, uh, you remember the terms vaguely, but not very well. And uh, C and D are means um, you're fairly familiar with it. And uh, I think most people have voted now and most people seem to either not have heard it at all or just vaguely remember it. We're in curators enough to claim that they, they do remember. Uh, so that's that's fine. Um, that means um, I will go slowly over these parts. Uh, thanks for participating in the poll. Um, if you if you do know, then this problem becomes simple because you can recognize it is asking the following question. Uh, if you're if you're looking for the pattern in for a pattern in the text. So here's our text again. I'll draw these pictures 500 times, so um, get used to this. Uh, if we try to find the pattern in here, it actually means, so if, if these match at this point, I will, I will draw these little lines to say that uh, there's equal characters in these ranges. What that really means is there's the pattern here and then arbitrary stuff uh, before and after it. And that together gives you the text. Okay. Another way of saying we can find the pattern in the text is saying the text is something followed by the pattern followed by more something, a different something potentially. And this is uh, what formal language people write in this way. This is the set of all strings over this alphabet sigma, so that's stuff. This is, again, more stuff, and there's the pattern in between. So this, uh, this term is the set of all strings that are formed by something followed by p followed by something, and something can be empty in both cases. Okay, um, people from, from regular expression, uh, people from, from formal languages uh, will know that this is a regular uh, expression, which means that this language that results from it is a regular language, a formal, regular formal language. And uh, um, if you've seen an automata class, then you will know that for all regular languages, you can find a deterministic finite automaton, a DFA that recognizes this. And by simulating this DFA on the text, so you feed the text one character at a time into this automaton, you can read off from the automaton uh, what is the uh, if, if you find a pattern and at what position. 
Okay, uh, that's pretty cool. So uh, as the theoretician would say, job done, let's go home. Uh, the practitioner, the, the, the programmer who wants to implement this might say, hold on, uh, not quite. Uh, first of all, I don't know about all this stuff, so please help me out. And uh, more seriously, also, if you, if you do know, uh, this just says there is such an automaton, but uh, it's not clear how to compute it, maybe. And the second problem is these automata can be very, very big, and then they would be close to useless for an efficient algorithm. It turns out both problems are not a real problem. They can be very efficiently solved, but they require a little closer a look than our theory professor might might have thought at the uh, first shot. Okay, um, to recap, uh, for those of you who have never seen this, uh, this is what people usually mean if they draw automata. It's a, a directed graph. There are these circles, That's these are states that you can be in. And then there are arcs or directed edges uh, with uh, letters on them, which are the labels um, that are assigned to this. And um, you can you can simulate such an automaton by basically starting with the start state. So this this arrow indicates where to start, and then whenever you read the next character, you just follow the edge that is labeled with that character. Okay. Um, maybe I'll uh, show you just the picture for the moment. This automaton is built from the pattern, and you can see this by uh, reading the characters on this uh, chain of, of, of states from 0 to 7, you read exactly the pattern. A, B, A, B, A, C, A. That's our pattern. Um, what you do if you want to find the pattern in the text now is you simulate the automaton on the text. Uh, let's do that briefly together. We start with the initial state 0. Here's the text. I um, already prepared this in this table. So we read an A. We're in that state 0 at the moment, so we check what edge goes with an A. So that goes to state 1. Now we read an A again, and the arc says we stay in state 1. So we are in state 1 still. Now we read a B, and the edge for B goes to state 2. OK. So now we're in state 2, and we read an A, so you, you see how this goes. Uh, state 3 with a C leads us back to 0. Um, from 0 with an A we go back to 1 and another A we stay in, in 1. Now reading a B takes us to 2 again. Then we read a th a, another A takes us to 3. Read another B here, so that takes us to 4. And now things get slightly more interesting. We actually get to um, the end of this automaton. And uh, at this point, we have, we have reached this um, node 7, uh, this, this state 7. And that's double circle. That means it's an absorbing, it's a final state, an accepting state. If you end up in that state, you will accept the input. So automata always do one or, one or two things. You feed them with a string, and they either tell you, I like this string, or they tell you, I don't like this string. They accept it, or they reject it. And they accept it exactly if and only if you end up in a final state after reading the input. OK, we do uh, one more A, but then here um, the entire alphabet just keeps us in, in this final state. So that means this automaton is built so that if there is an occurrence of the pattern in T, that first occurrence will take you to state 7, and you will stay there indefinitely, which also means the first point where you found state 7, that is the end of the first occurrence, right? So you can find a here is your occurrence of the pattern A, B, A, B, A, C, A. That's pretty easy. That's um, mostly what we need from automata theory. Um, uh, the other things, there's a few uh, other concepts that will make more sense if you've seen them before. Otherwise, the motivation might not make so much sense to you, but you can still follow along by just uh, looking at, at the examples and uh, listening to what I say. So here's that table filled out in nicely. Uh, 
what is going on here and what is what is um, the intuition behind this? And I want to um, stress that part. So this uh, this automaton, I just threw this at you and I, I said, this is built from the pattern and we will look uh, closely at what that means um, and how to build it. The main insight um, that is behind this automaton is, is this invariant. Uh, if you're currently in state Q, it means you have seen a prefix of the pattern of Q characters, position zero up to Q, but excluding Q, remember? Uh, so this is, this is the longest prefix of the pattern you have seen up to now when you start, um, when you start reading the text. So that's the longest prefix of the pattern you can find in the, the current portion of the text. Uh, and no longer prefix of that exists. Um, so this is this is shown down here, but um, in a we need that picture for something else. Um, let me let me show this again. So one more time, my favorite picture. Here's the text. The light's doing weird things today. Um, you feed the text through this automaton. So there's a certain portion of the text that your automaton has not yet seen, okay? So this is, this is the prefix that um, the automaton really has read. You feed this into the automaton character by character. And uh, after every character, this, the automaton changes state and um, that state tells you what it currently thinks it has seen. And if um, at this point you're in state Q, after reading this last character, then it means that there's a prefix of the pattern. Maybe the pattern would be here, but we don't know if this matches. The only thing we know is that up to here it matches. And uh, this is, this matching part is exactly up to, sorry, uh, up to, up to state, up to letter Q, but excluding this last one. Okay. Um, that is what is meant by this invariant, and that's how this cons this automaton is, is constructed. Um, why 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 can something like this work? Um, so here, the puzzling thing is that this automaton is only constructed knowing the pattern. It doesn't know the text, and the same automaton works for all texts. Uh, that might be a bit surprising. How is this possible? Because um, if the automaton only knows the pattern, how can it react correctly to all possible texts? Uh, and the answer to that is, is in this observation here. Um, the automaton, or its state to be more precise, tells us that uh, the text we've seen so far ends with a certain prefix of the pattern. That was the previous state, Q. And now we read one more character from the text, C. Um, if, we have a, um, if we have a mismatch, if we do have a match, then we just go to the next state and uh, we know again um, more about the text. We have learned more about the text by knowing that there's one more character we could match. But uh, how do we know what to do if it doesn't match? Um, then we know that this is not a prefix of P. And we know uh, before we had C, this was the longest prefix. Okay. So this also means um, if you're looking at, if you're looking at this picture down here, if the text currently ends with um, this uh, shouldn't be the entire text. There can be stuff before it. I forgot to draw the stuff. So uh, T is stuff followed by a prefix of the pattern. And now this new character C, which uh, is not the next character in the pattern. So this is, um, it's not PQ. Otherwise we would not be in this case. Um, then we would want to find a new state q prime and that state can only be smaller 
So it's completely uh, determined by the characters we already know and the one character that we read. So all the information to decide uh, what happens is already in the automaton. I hope this uh, helped a bit to clarify why the automaton really has all the information necessary to determine what next state to go to, and hence to decide whether the pattern occurs in the text.